The Tokener Explains, a beginner's guide to developing smart contracts using the Solidity programming language on top of the Ethereum blockchain platform. In the previous episode, we've, uh, we have talked about static arrays and begun the work on our tic-tac-toe contract. In this episode, we will be continuing and finishing our tic-tac-toe smart contract. In the previous episode, we've created a basic setup of how this contract uh, works and created a way to display the current state of this contract. However, most of the logic of actually placing a move and what shape is used for this and checking if you are actually allowed to do this move currently has not yet been done. And also, we don't have a way yet to check uh, if the game is currently won or uh, possibly if it's a draw. So that's what we will be building today in this episode. So let's get back to Remix and this is what we've ended up with uh, at the end of the last episode. If you uh, want to follow along you can copy over this code from the show notes or the, the transcription of this episode which you can find at thetokener.com. Now most uh, the, the, the main problem that's not been written yet is inside here in the perform move function. There's a lot of functionality that we need to add to make sure that we actually follow the rules of tic-tac-toe. So, um, let's see. Here are a couple of rules that we need to follow. We want to make sure that they are a player in the game and that the game is not over yet and that actually the player that calls perform move is currently uh, allowed to move because it's their turn. And of course, uh, bounce checking if the given position is in bounce is something we are already currently doing. Okay, so let's see. They are a player in the game. This is easy to check because we have player one and player two over here that get filled in at uh, when the contract is created. So we can write a requirement that the, the, the caller of perform move has to be either player one or player two. Now, uh, to check if the game is still going on, we need some way to check if the game is over. And this is a little bit more, uh, more involved. For now, let's just create a function called is game over. Uh, so call this function is game over and of course we will get an error because this function does not currently exist yet but we will get back to this now the third thing we want to check is that the current player is actually currently uh, allowed to move because it's their turn so uh, we can again check the message sender to something we will call current player address but of course this doesn't exist yet we will uh, write this very shortly now finally something to check uh, is if the current space on the board is still empty and we can of course also write this by writing require board xpos ypos should be equal to square state dot empty and let me remove this extra bracket uh, okay Now we ha still have to implement these two functions over here. To actually implement is game over, it is helpful to uh, create a helper function because the game can be over because of two reasons. Either uh, there's a draw or there actually is a winner. To check if there is a winner, we need a lot of code and I'm just going to paste this in uh, because it would take uh, a while to write this out otherwise. Um, here we go. I will walk you through it. Don't, uh, don't be scared. Uh, what this function do does is to check all the combinations of the board. It checks all the columns. If all the columns have the same value and are not empty uh, and it then does the same thing for the rows as well as for the diagonals. So to uh, go through one of these statements, it checks if the first uh, the the first square of this column is not empty, and it has the same value as the second square, and it has the same value as the third square. 
then return what's inside the first square. So this will either return an X or it will turn the, the O, depending on uh, who is actually in there. And in this way, the winning player shape function will return X if that X is currently uh, has there are three X's in a row or column or diagonal. It will return O if there are three of those in a row, column or diagonal. And if nothing of this happens, then we will just return empty over here. Now this winning player shape function uh, will be used by the isGameOver function. But this also checks for something else, uh, namely that the current move uh, should still be below 8 if the game is not over yet. So the game is over if we have a winner that's not empty or uh, if there has have been more than uh, 8 moves. In other words, the whole board is full. Alright, now there's still one error to fix, which is current player address. Current player address will uh, is a function that will return the address of the current player, because that's why it's named this way. And to program this, uh, let's let's put it up here above is game over. To program this, we check if the current move variable that we increment after every move, if this is currently an even number, then player two is allowed to to move, and if it's an odd number, then player one is allowed to move. So for whom the modular operator is new, this mean uh, changes the integer increment so here current move to wrap around at 2 so rather than going 1 2 3 4 it goes 1 uh, so 0 1 2 3 4 it goes 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 etc and you can of course read a lot more about this uh, in other resources such as on, on Wikipedia okay we're almost there now it's quite important of course to actually not forget to increment the current move uh, at the end of the perform move function so we actually change whose turn it currently is current move is current move plus one all right um, I think we're nearly there uh, one last check that I would like to do is in the constructor to make sure that actually pay player 2 is uh, never allowed to be zero. Require player two to not be equal to zero. And what this that means is that the players are never able to be the zero address, which is a placeholder address that's used as an empty value uh, for addresses. And this means that we can use the empty address uh, as a return value from some uh, from some functions because it would be really nice if the outside world also had the way to check uh, who the winner is of the current tic-tac-toe contract and currently this is not possible we can of course ourselves look at the resulting state of the game but we can't really check who the winner is programmatically so let's write a function for this um, let's call it winner which is, uh, should, is, is uh, quite an apt name I think and this can be used together with the isGameOver function to check uh, if the game is currently finished and who is actually the winner. So what this does is it checks the winning player shape, which we have programmed uh, before, which is the function where we check all the rows and the columns. And then if this is an X, then player 2 has won because he was moving during all the even uh, turns and otherwise it will be player one who has one if it's an O and otherwise it's uh, there is no winner yet or the game is a draw and in that case uh, in that case we will return the empty address so because we want to be able to return the empty address we do not allow player two to be the empty address and also it wouldn't make any sense because nobody is able actually able to call any function from this address so if we were to forget to put in uh, anything in this uh, parameter while deploying the contract 
then we would create a contract that couldn't be used. So it's better to actually refund the person that forgot to, uh, to fill in some details in that case, rather than deploying a contract that doesn't do anything. It just takes up space and it costs money and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's better to uh, be nice to people. All right, now we're all done with the tic-tac-toe contract. So let's actually uh, try it out. Let's throw away everything we've had so far. Let's make sure we compile the new contract. And deploy it. And of course, before deploying, let me actually move it up a little bit more so we have some more space. Let's copy the second account using this copy value to clipboard pattern and paste it over here. And let's not forget to switch back to the first account before we click deploy. And now we have our tic-tac-toe contract over here. Now when we check the state, oh, that was the winner. There's no winner yet, it's zero. If we check the state, uh, it will take a little bit, but here we go, the board is empty. Now if we try to perform a move, say we want to fill in the middle again, we will get, uh, let's scroll down here, please. It's a bit slow because I'm currently also capturing, of course. Here we go, we get an error because we try to move first as the player that deployed the contract, which is not allowed because the other player should move first. So let's switch to the other person and try again. We fill in one, one, and we perform the move. And this time, come on, you can do it. There we go. Yes, it has worked. So if we check the state again, and again, it takes a little bit. Now you see there's an X inside. Now, if we switch back to the other account, so to the first player, then we can say, uh, say in the top left corner, we can place an O. So if we check the state again, uh, oh, interesting. I've, there's still a mistake in our code. Because as you see, uh, we have now filled in an X rather than an O. So let's find out what goes wrong. Yes, we always fill in here. We always fill in an X rather than filling in the current player shape. And this is a function we actually haven't written yet. We are always filling in X's. Uh, of course, actually writing this function is very simple. It's very similar to, uh, to the current player address function. But rather than returning the addresses, we return either an X or an O. So here we are. Now we are all done. And if you would try again, you would find out that actually you will now enter an O the second time around. So just to be sure, let's clear out everything again. Deploy again. Of course, it doesn't work because we need to enter the player2 address. Let's just use the same account for both players now so we don't have to switch all the time. Uh, it makes for quick and easy testing. And now if we try to put in something in the middle, then here we are. Check the state and it's in the middle. And if we say the bottom left corner and we perform that and we check the state again, now we have an O in the bottom left corner. Okay, let's just to make sure uh, everything works as intended, uh, try to win the game uh, first. Let's see, is the game over? No, the game is currently not over. Now let's fill in another square and check how the game looks. We have an X in the bottom here. Now rather than, uh, let's pretend that the other player, the O player is very, uh, very, a very uh, bad player. Uh, so let's fill in a square that doesn't actually block X from winning. So let's check again. Yes, and we're back. Okay, um, here we go. Let's try to fill in uh, on row one, or column one, the middle column and the top row. 
to, uh, to fill in an X there. And now the game should be over. And if we check who the winner is, it shouldn't no longer it says zero, but rather it says the address of player two. So, and what shape does it have? Shape one or X. So, uh, of course, we can see that this is true because if we inspect this as, uh, as ourselves, we see that there are three X's lined up over here now. So there we go. Now we've created a complete smart contract that allows two people to play tic-tac-toe from wherever they, were, they are, anywhere in the world, without central oversight by using the Ethereum blockchain. Thank you for watching this episode of The Tokener Explains. Like, subscribe, and tell us in the comment section what you think of this episode, or any questions you might have. Also, check out the show notes page, which we will keep up to date even when new versions of Solidity are released. Oh, and you should definitely ring the notification bell to make sure that you will know right away when a new episode of The Tokener Explains appears. The Tokener Explains is a collaboration between The Tokener and Resilia. If you are interested in the latest cryptocurrency related information and news, you should go to thetokener.com. And if you are currently building your own blockchain related product, 